<clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> I'm finishing off my um, 50 uh, Greatest Superstars um, DVD review rant um, with um, my own list of the 50 Greatest Superstars of all time. Now, when I say my own, I actually mean this is an objective list um, that give or take two spaces, each person is in the right place, in the right area of where they should be in the 50 greatest of all time. There is only a small, minor bit of subjectivity on my part. Um, even so much so that some uh, of the people in the highest spot are not some of my favourites. Um, some people who are lower down are some of my favourites. Um, this is about the impact they've had on the industry, how much they've influenced future generations. Um, did they draw big? Did they draw big during a boom um, time in the industry so more eyes were on them? Are they icons of the industry? Um, their wrestling ability, their talking ability, um, you know, generally um, how big their fandom are. Uh, and I will go into some justification, more so in the latter half um, than the first. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you did like this series of videos on the um, 50 Greatest, um, and uh, tell me your thoughts. I must add that um, very few uh, have come from the PG era, and I will. I might go into, if I've got time, I might go into the reason for why very few have gone into... Oh, from the PG era have made it into this list. So uh, first is Lex Luger, uh, someone I uh, really don't like. I didn't buy into even when um, he first came around. I did like his narcissist Lex Luger gig, um, but uh, number 50 is Lex Luger um, merely because everywhere he went he was a star, he looked the part, didn't have much wrestling ability. But um, he has got one of the most iconic moments in wrestling when he body slammed uh, Yoko Zuna. So um, Lex Luger, definitely one of the biggest stars of the 90s during um, a, a time when there were eyes on wrestling, not as many as in the, the 80s, but still there were eyes on wrestling and a lot of them. So Lex Luger makes it in. Um, Gorilla Monsoon comes number 49, uh, great big man. Um, the reason he's 49 is because he was kind of slightly before the time that wrestling really kicked off with the um, whole Hulkamania um, you know, period. But he was still there during like uh, times where there was a big star like um, Andre the Giant. Um, so he comes in at number 49. Um, 48 is Superstar Billy Graham, uh, again he did come in before a boom period of wrestling but there is no doubt the influence Superstar Billy Graham has had on wrestling. Not the nicest of guys um, as a person but nonetheless um, had a great influence on the more flamboyant um, stars of the future such as Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, um, Jesse the Body Ventura and the list goes on. Um, Yes. Um, 47, Kevin Nash. Not a wrestler I followed too much, uh, otherwise known as Diesel. Um, that was number 47. Um, big impact on the wrestling industry in terms of his stint um, in the NWO. Um, however, I'm not sure how much he was the big star of that show. I think it was much more Hulk Hogan. And I, I think before then, he was known as um, Shawn Michael Bodyguard. People did like him. He was a good talker as well on the mic. Um, a bit overrated as far as I'm concerned. He never really excited me as a performer, but um, that's my own personal opinion. But in terms of his um, relation to the NWO, uh, he was part of a highly rated and, 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 and the central part of a highly... Um, viewed uh you know um episode within uh wrestling history uh nick Bunk buckwinkle um one of the uh great wrestlers um oh, he's number 46 i've done a lot of research on this by the way so he is one of the great wrestlers of the um awa i believe um uh, uh multiple champion um, a bit before there were eyes, a lot of eyes on wrestling, before there was a real megastar in wrestling like Andre the Giant, um, etc. 
um, but uh, he was one of the great um, mic workers, one of the great stick workers, um, very smooth and slick on the mic, uh, and, uh, and could back it up in the ring. Don't know much about him, so don't take everything I said about him as um, the Bible, but he, he should be on this list. Um, number 45 is Edge. Uh, people may think this is too low for Edge, but I think um, this is, a, I mean, this is probably the most personal one I've, I've done. I really think Edge is um, quite overrated. This might be a bit subjective. Um, there is a chance that he could go up in the rankings, actually. But if you look at the rest of who I've put above him, um, you'll see that I think they had, I'll explain why I, I think they had more impact on the industry. Um, but Edge, um, you know, uh, rated our superstar gig during the um, uh, Ruthless Aggression era really was what um, actually, um, you know, uh, propelled him to, you know, uh, great stardom. I wouldn't say mega stardom. I don't think anyone who doesn't follow wrestling knows who Edge is. Um, I don't think he has any uh, appeal outside of the wrestling industry. Um, I think he's a fan favourite within the wrestling industry and it's very divided um, even within the, the, the wrestling industry as to his entertainment value. Um, he did start off in a rather entertaining tag team during the Attitude Era in which he, um, you know, as a tag team competitor made more waves, I think, um, you know, than as an individual competitor. More people um, probably who are casual viewers of wrestling with no edge as a um, tag team um, competitor. Um, and he was part of um, some of the best uh, tables, uh, ladders um, and chairs matches uh, and, and, and performed really great in them. Um, he's known as one of the greats of the mic. I don't agree, but for that reason edge is has to be put on. Um, 44 is Jeff Hardy, the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, 44 Jeff Hardy, um, the, uh, what's his name, the enigmatic enigma, or the charismatic enigma, sorry, pardon me, um, now, 44 Jeff Hardy, many people think that Jeff Hardy shouldn't be on this list, um, I'm not a big fan of Jeff Hardy myself, however, um, I would say this, um, he does have a mass, mass following, and during the Attitude Era, during the boom period of the Attitude Era, I think people were more divided um, between liking the Dudley Boys or liking the Hardy Boys. The children um, more went towards the Hardy Boys, and he had a big fan base there. And if you were a Hardy Boys fan, essentially you were a Jeff Hardy fan. You weren't really, you know, both of the Hardy fans. Everybody liked. If they like the Hardy Boys, they like Jeff Hardy. Um, the adults more, uh, you know, uh, kind of um, veered towards um, supporting the Dudley Boys, on the other hand, I think. So the crowd was kind of split in that. But nonetheless, he was a hero of his time, took a lot of um, risks. So he is an innovator of the, um, you know, high-flying style. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So Jeff Hardy, number 44. Uh, number 43 is Rey Mysterio. Obviously, um, a lot of people have said that number 9, which he was on on the actual list, is way, 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 way too high, and perhaps that Rey Mysterio shouldn't even be on the list at all. But I would say in his, his impact on the industry in terms of bringing the Lucha Libre style to, um, a, popul to a popular uh, television broadcast, which is the WWE, is worthy of putting him on um, on this list, and he is one of the great wrestlers um, of the new generation. To be honest, even though I don't like his gimmick, I think he's personalityless. I I, I loathe any um, promo uh, that he's going to cut. I just really don't want to hear it. But nonetheless, he is the ultimate good guy superhero for the kids. Um, kids do seem to. Uh, like him a lot. So Rey Mysterio does have a place on this list. Number 42, Bob Backlund, um, one of the longest title uh, world championship title reigns ever. Um, also, uh, it's it, it, he's got one of the greatest images in wrestling history when his manager throws in the towel 
um, after being beaten by the Iron Sheik. I think that's enough to put him at 42. Um, known as a great technical wrestler, great in-ring competitor, not great on the mic or, you know, but he was the every man's man, you know, so uh, people uh, liked him and were drew towards him at the time. Um, so, or, uh, yeah. So, it's, it, Bob Backlund does deserve a place, even um, though I believe a low place, 42. But Bob Backlund, um, as I said, great in-ring competitor as well. Um, his in-ring in style was um, very innovative in terms of technical wrestling. Um, so we've got number 41, which is Gorgeous George. Uh, Gorgeous George, there for being the, basically the first um, real heel um, wrestler and getting a lot of heat at the time for his antics in the wrestling ring. Um, so yeah, he's an innovator in that sense, um, so he deserves to be on the list for that reason and that reason alone, so 41, uh, Gorgeous George. Number 40, Jimmy Snooker. Uh, Jimmy Snooker, you know, what to say about him, everyone remembers um, the moment where he jumps off a uh, cage in Madison Square Garden doing, um, I can't even remember what he called the move, the, 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 it, was, it was essentially a frog splash. But uh, Jimmy Snooker Snarl, um, everyone got excited when he did that move, just generally speaking. I even remember that, like, you know, as soon as he got on those top ropes and went to do that move and he executed it so beautifully. And I think he's going to be remembered for that, you know, like that. And obviously, you know, puts up the hand sign, um, waves to the fans, they go wild. And then obviously when he jumped off that cage, uh, it, it's one of those memories that... Um, you know, if you were there or just in general, people never forget. People thought like he was flying. People didn't do that stuff back then. It was very, very innovative to jump off a cage that high. Uh, number 39, Jesse the Body Ventura. Um, this guy basically is, you know, he's been in movies. He's one of the most mainstream guys. He's a mayor, for God's sake. Um, you know, his success took him to that level where he became mayor. Um, you know, he he's one of he's one of the most mainstream guys uh, of, of uh, wrestling history. One of the greatest talkers in wrestling history. Um, you know, uh, there's not much to say about him. He he's just one of the most mainstream guys. Everyone remembers his him from the Predator. You know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, you know, uh, obviously he was able to develop into the mainstream m more than probably most. Um, and, uh, you know, is also known as one of the greatest talkers in the business, um, you know, of all time. Uh, number 38, Harley Race, um, kind of one of the first bruiser brawlers. Don't know too much about him, so I know he needs to be on this list, um, but not, not a hell of a lot. I know he was just very, very... Um, you know, in terms of the brawling style is, um, you know, one of the people who is very, very uh, well known and often, um, you know, uh, it, <laughs> what I'm, I'm going to say intimidated, imitated, um, often imitated, you know, people like Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin, a lot of people have watched this guy's style and... Um, you know, have um, emulated it. Uh, number 37 is Jerry the King Lawler. Um, now, Jerry the King Lawler um, needs to be on this list. A lot of people, I've read that, uh, well, looked at the list. Um, you know, obviously, it's very glaring when somebody's above Hulk Hogan, who's at 23. But a lot of the people who have looked at the list say Jerry Lawler shouldn't be on it. I don't agree. I think Jerry Lawler has suffered under the weight of what he's done in recent times, um, especially during the PG era, just looking like a sellout bitch. But what he did in the Attitude Era as a colour commentator, he was one of the great colour commentators. He was very, very funny. Great with um, uh, JR, good old JR. Um, plus, um, Jerry Lawler has had some mainstream appeal as well. He did a lot of a thing with Andy Kaufman, um, which got big ratings um, and put a lot of eyes on wrestling, and he became a household name, Jerry the King Lawler. 
with um, the little comedy uh, stints he was doing with um, uh, Andy Kaufman. Um, he also um, obviously uh, did a film with uh, about on Andy Kaufman's life where he played himself, getting himself uh, uh, some more mainstream notoriety. Um, and added to that, he's had some great feuds. He had um, a great and controversial feuds, including his feud with Jake the Snake, where he's taking the piss out of him as an alcoholic. His feud with Bret Hart, where he was, you know, ripping the shit out of um, uh, Bret Hart's father, uh, just calling him an old man, like he's almost, like he's a corpse just walking around. Just and and the feud got really, really heated, you know, like really, really heated between him and Bret Hart. It seemed like real at the time. Um, I don't know how I can't remember exactly how well the matches turned out, but um, that was all in WWE, and uh, he he has had a big, big influence on WWE. I'm sorry to say, both as Colin commentator, as wrestler, and in terms of his mainstream appeal but he's at, he, he's at a reasonable position which is 37 not like 21 or whatever he was in the wwe uh, list which is just bullshit um 36 is uh buddy rogers mainly here for being the first guy to do the um nature boy um uh you know um gimmick um which obviously has been um uh, emulated uh, by Ric Flair and others actually but that whole kind of playboy image started with Buddy Rogers um, even the walk down to the walk came from Buddy Rogers um, the, the way he take bumps um, is very very similar to um, uh, Ric Flair um, he innovated a lot of the kind of heel um, style uh, you know heel style bumps and heel style um selling and 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 just a general sense of being lavish um, in the ring so he he does deserve a place on there um number 35 is ravishing rick rude no one will ever forget the first time they see ravishing rick rude he is absolutely amazing heel one of the best heels of all time could be in the top 10 heels of all time um, to be honest, one of my personal favourites, and this shows me trying to be objective with this list, I've put him at number 35. Um, fact is, um, he'd come in there, he'd uh, taunt the crowd, getting the women to like look over his body, kiss a woman every week from the crowd, getting telling the men they're all sweat hogs. It was just brilliant. And then his um, finishing move was brilliant. He was really, really great in the ring. Made the baby face look like a million dollars when he was in the ring with him. Uh, just a fantastic, fantastic heel. Uh, he did everything a heel is supposed to do. Uh, and he did everything well. Um, so 35, Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, number 33, Big Van Vader. Um, best, one of the best, most acrobatic uh, big men of all time. Definitely deserves to be on there. Real bruiser in the ring. Some of his matches with um, Mick Foley are absolutely um, astonishing. In fact, um, Big Van Vader is the guy who ripped off Mick Foley's ear. Um, so, if you're talking about images in wrestling that are um, memorable, you can't get more memorable than ripping a guy's ear off. Uh, so that's number 34, Big Van Vader. Also, as I said, one of the most acrobatic guys in the ring as well. Um, so, uh, number 33, we've got Booker T. This is the last one I'm going to do on this part of the video. I'll do uh, part two after. Um, Booker T... Um, what can you say about Booker T? Just magnetic personality, one of the best African American um, re wrestlers of all time, uh, if not the best um, African, pure African American wrestler of all time. Um, he's, he's seriously got a magnetic personality. He could have had a, such a good run, um, much better than, than what he had. I think he could easily have been a face of a company if um, need be. He was just really, really brilliant on the mic. Um, a frenetic style in the ring. Um, not exactly technical, but still cool. You just liked it. And of course, he's the five-time five -time champion. And who can forget the spinner Rooney? Um, you know, possibly someone you didn't like at first, but soon he kind of just 
ended up growing on you because he was just so genuine and lovable. Um, I'll continue this in part two.